I just wanted to speak a little bit about the significance. Um, when you received the call from the Asian Awards yes. um, about this award, yes. what were your reactions? Well, I really, I, I haven't heard uh, in Italy about this award, but um, Mr. Paul um, was so, uh, I don't know, really made me interested in about this, uh, this award. And he spoke so strongly about mother. And uh, I said, why not? I, I must go. And uh, so I decided to come. But he's a very good person. So that's why I came. Thank you. Um, Father, you first met Mother Teresa more than a decade ago. Ooh, 30 years ago. When you first met, uh, were you aware at that time uh, of what you were about to embark on on, on on a journey that she was about to embark on? Well, she had already embarked upon it, and I, I first remember listening to her in, in, in Rome, probably about 1982, and she was giving a talk to young people, and she was giving a talk on chastity and virginity and the call of young people to live a, a chaste and a holy life. And there were all these young people here, normal young people, full of life, full of ambition for life. And I remember listening to her and then watching all these young people and how they hung on every word. Do you know, a, a religious nun, 50, 60 years of age at that time. And everything that she said was totally countercultural about that life, that you should that you should preserve yourself for marriage, that you should have not intimacy until you marry, the importance of the um, of the unborn child. And I just remember looking at all these young people, normal young people like yourself, full of ambition for life. And she spoke a truth to them. And ever since then, uh, there was something about her, some 10, 15 years later, um, when I was a priest, I remember taking her to Oxford, to the Oxford Union. And once again, it was full of people, full of students, Oxford undergraduates, full of brain and that sort of thing. And she spoke to them the same thing, the message of the sanctity of life and, and, and the wrongs of contraception. And, I, and they hung on every word. They may not have agreed with her, but they knew that there was something about her. And then some years later, going to Calcutta and just being with her for some days and seeing her with the poor, the poor who were her children, I understood how this was an instrument of God in our world. Yes, may I say something? Please. When she received the Nobel Prize, she made a wonderful speech. And as you know, in, uh, in Stockholm, in Sweden, I mean, uh, abortion is normal, it's quite a, a normal thing. Mm. But she, when she spoke, everybody was really moved because she said, please, please, don't give away these babies. Give them to me. I will grow them up. Mm. It's a wonderful, inspiring story. Now, this week, you may or may not be aware uh, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales is in India uh, having a royal gala, a gala dinner for his charity, the Prince's Trust. Uh, the significance I want to lead to is her relationship with Lady Diana. Yes. Uh, could you speak a little bit about your experiences of her experiences with Lady Diana? Because I know Lady Diana was a huge uh, devotee of yes, uh, Mother, Mother Teresa. Yes, but she didn't spoke about that. She never spoke. She didn't say a thing. She, she was very... Well, it was like a priest. I mean, Lady Diane went to her and spoke to her, but she never spoke about it. She never said a word about it. You've met Lady Diana as well and, and, and witnessed firsthand the work uh, that Lady Diana contributed to. Is there anything you could add to, to this? Because uh, the reason I ask is because the significance of India and the Asian Awards and the collective sort of love that's coming back from India today for Mother um, there seems to be a link there, and I'm trying to draw some parallels between what India is today and what India was when Mother was doing the work that she was doing and what association we could talk about. Um, I, I mean, just one or two little, little reflections there. Um, um, Princess Diana was, was deeply drawn to Mother because, uh, you know, she was, a, she was a woman of a complicated story, a complicated life, and, 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 and th there was in her a great need for healing, 
and for mercy. And that was why she was determined to meet Mother. And I was there when they first met. And there was a real sense of Diana coming to Mother as a mother. And then Mother was absolutely determined and said that the marriage should not finish, that it should be a strong marriage, that she should pray for the marriage, she should pray to stay together with Prince Charles. And she was deeply concerned about the boys because a broken marriage, a divorce, is always destructive of young people, always, always. And Mother was determined that, that, that this family, which was obviously going to be so important in the lives of people of this country, of India and elsewhere, should be a united family. And that was why Mother was so deeply careful and mindful of Diana and really wanted to, 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 to help her. It was a very beautiful relationship. It was, they may have met only four or five times, but there was a real sense that she was a mother to her. Yes, that's mm. true. Mm. Yes. Uh, motherhood, we all know, is, a, is something that we've all uh, looked at as something that's the, the sort of the only love that really can help you get away with even the most terrible things as a child. Your mother will forgive you for that. Um, I, I want to quickly just talk about the, the statement that I heard about helping the poorest of the poor, salvation for the poorest of the poor, and yet here we are ironically in a room with the richest of the rich. Yes. Uh, what are your feelings about what, we could, what message and energy we could create to help the poorest of the poor with the magnitude of what we have in that room? Well, you see, Mother used to say, if there weren't the rich people, I couldn't help the poor people. So I need rich people. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't despise money because money may help me to help who really needs it. That's it. So, I mean, uh, it, it, she was really pragmatic, you see. She saw life as it is. Because that's the life. I mean, our, 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 the human beings like this, these rich people, poor people, medium people. But mother, she was ready for everybody. She was always ready. And if someone came and said, you know, mother, I'm not a very good person but I'm very rich. I'm going to give you some money, uh, quite a lot of money, and she, she would take it. Someone criticized her and said, uh, it's not right that she takes money from this person, it's not a p good person. She said, I don't care. God is uh, misericordioso, we say in Mexico. Italian. Yes, and who am I to say? He, he will be pardoned, mm. most probably. Mm. Mm. So, this money for me is important. It's more important for the people help. And, and also what was very, very important with Mother, Mother would never take any money from government no. or state, no, yeah. no organization. That's true. Because she said the most important thing is that when you give, it must hurt. Yes. You know, it has to be an act of love. Mm. She wanted to help people to love. Yeah. And love only makes sense when it hurts, yes. you know. And, 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 and in many ways, that her, her, her great spiritual mentor was Therese of Lisieux, who always said, you do the little things of life with great love. Mm. This is how we make the world a better place. Very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. And no, no. Thank you for being thank with you. us today. It's such a nice pleasure talking to you. Yeah.